Greetings students and welcome back to another video on quantum mechanics. In this lesson I'm going to solve a problem involving wave functions that should put everything we've learned so far in quantum mechanics together and perhaps solidify some concepts. So the problem we're solving goes something like this. A particle is represented at time t equals zero by the following wave function that's specified in this piecewise manner, where the wave function at x comma zero is given by capital A times a squared minus x squared when x is between negative a and a, and is zero for every other value of x. Now this problem is pretty involved. It's got eight parts a through h that I've written here, which I'm gonna solve one by one. The first part of this problem asks us to find the normalization constant capital A of this wave function. Now we know from the normalization condition that if we integrate the magnitude squared of psi over the entire domain then we're supposed to get 1. In this problem this means we can plug in psi into this normalization condition, perform the integration and use the fact that our integral has to equal 1 to determine our normalization constant A. So let's do that, let's plug in our psi. Now psi is actually zero everywhere except between negative a and positive a, so what we'll do is we'll change the limits of integration to negative a and a because the rest of the domain doesn't matter since psi is just zero there. Let's expand this and then take the normalization constant out of the integral. Integrating this is pretty easy, since it's a polynomial expression you just increase the power on x by one and divide by that new increased power. And when we perform the integration here's what we'll get. Let's now apply the limits. At x equals a, we'll have a to the 5 minus 2a to the 5 over 3 plus 1 fifth a to the 5. And at x equals negative a, because the powers on x are all odd, we'll have the opposite. So now all we have to do is add all these fractions involving a to the 5, and when we do that, we'll find that capital A squared times 16 over 15 a to the 5 is 1. Which means that if we solve for the normalization constant, we'll get capital A squared equals 15 over 16 a to the 5, so therefore capital A equals 1 over 4 a squared times the square root of 15 over a. So now we have our normalization constant capital A. Let's go to part B, where we're supposed to find the expectation value of x. From a previous video, links in the description, we talked about how to find the expectation value of a physical quantity q for a wave function psi. The expectation value of q, which is in general a function of the position x and momentum p, is found using this equation. This means that the expectation value of x is given by the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi conjugate times x hat psi dx. Now psi is a real function, so the complex conjugate of psi is just psi, which means that we can simplify our equation for the expectation value of x and get the following. The operator x hat is just the scalar x, and the wave function psi is only non-zero between negative a and positive a. So once we plug in the x hat as x and change our limits, we'll have the following equation for the expectation value of position. And finally, plugging in our psi squared and simplifying yields this equation. Now I'm not going to meticulously evaluate this integral because it's pretty easy and I trust that you guys can handle it, especially since I went more slowly in part a but when you do end up evaluating the integral, you'll get zero as your answer. This makes sense, especially when you look at the integral, because the function you're integrating is an odd function, since there's only odd powers of x, and when you integrate an odd function over an interval, like negative a and a over a symmetric interval, you'll get zero as your answer. Part c asks us to find the expectation value of p, which I'll write as px or the x momentum, since x is the only dimension we're dealing with. Again, we know from the expectation value formula that the expectation value of px of a wave function psi is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi conjugate times px hat psi dx. Since psi is real, we can get rid of the asterisk, and since psi is zero everywhere that's not an interval between negative a and a, we can change the limits of integration to negative a and a. The operator px hat is given by h bar over i times the partial with respect to x, so if we plug it into the equation for the expectation value of px, here's what we'll get. Note that the partial derivative applies to the second psi in this integral. We can now plug in the size and get the following expression. I've left the normalization constant as capital A just to keep the writing more simple, we already know what it is and can plug it in later if necessary. 
the partial derivative of a squared minus x squared with respect to x is just negative 2x, so this is what we end up with for the integral. Again, I'll leave you guys to do the computation and show that the expectation value of px is 0. This makes sense since, once again, we're integrating an odd function over an interval that's symmetric around 0. Moving on to part d, now we have to find the expectation value of x squared. We already have the equation for the expectation value of x, which I'm going to copy paste here. All we have to do is change the x to the x squared in the integral to get the expression for the expectation value of x squared. Again, the computation of this integral is left as an exercise, and the final answer for the expectation value of x squared is 1 over 7a squared. Part e asks us to now find the expectation value of px squared. Again, the formula can be easily changed from the formula for the expectation value of px. The main difference is that the momentum operator in the middle is squared, and I'm using air quotes for squared because yes, the h bar over i portion of the squared momentum operator is squared the way you're used to seeing. However, the partial derivative portion isn't exactly squared in the sense that it's multiplying itself, it's squared in the sense that it's operating on itself. This is because squaring an operator is equivalent to operating that operator twice, and so if you take the partial derivative of a partial derivative, you'll get the second partial derivative. Hopefully that clears up any confusion. Now if you take the second partial derivative of a squared minus x squared, you'll just get negative 2. This means our expectation value for the square momentum will look like this. And after you do all the integration in algebra, you'll find that the expectation value of px squared is 5h bar squared over 2a squared. Now parts f and g want us to find the uncertainties in the position and momentum respectively. This shouldn't be too difficult because we know from statistics that the standard deviation, the uncertainty in a quantity q, can be calculated by subtracting the expectation value of q squared and the square of the expectation value of q and then taking the square root. So the uncertainty in x is just the square root of the expectation value of x squared minus the expectation value of x squared. The expectation value of x is just 0, so the uncertainty on x is given by the square root of 1 over 7 times a. That just leaves the expectation value of px, which is given by a similar equation. The expectation value of px is 0, so the uncertainty in momentum is just the square root of 5 over 2 times h bar over a. That just leaves part h, which asks us to verify that the uncertainty principle holds true here. Recall that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle between position and momentum is that the sigma x times sigma px is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. For this particular problem, the product of the uncertainties between position and momentum is square root of 1 over 7a times the square root of 5 over 2 h bar over a. And if you simplify, this becomes the square root of 5 over 14 times h bar. Now this is actually greater than h bar over 2 because if you actually evaluate the square root of 5 over 14, it's going to be about 0.6. And 0.6 h bar is greater than 0.5 h bar, which means that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is verified for this problem. Anyway, that should do it for this video. We've successfully solved a pretty long problem in quantum mechanics. Hopefully you now have the foundation to proceed to more difficult topics. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I put a link to my Patreon in the description for those interested. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.